family and friends, welcome to episode 10, which will unfortunately be on a sad note, because today we talk about the emotion of sadness and how to cope with this life-draining condition. We will all experience this emotion to some degree in our lives, times that no one looks forward to. I've always addressed sadness from a temporary perspective because there is simply no other perspective that will allow you to recover from a soul pitting grasp. Sadness is an emotion that you learn to let go. You can only do this by actively engaging and hoping for a brighter future. Those that dwell on the past simply remain there indefinitely. Besides the numerous deaths our families have endured, for me the saddest day of my life would have to be the morning after Hurricane Hugo, Category 5 hurricane, struck our home island of St. Croix. I was 12 years old at the time, and after spending a night thinking that death was around the corner at any minute, my family and I saw the sun rise on an alien environment, void of anything remotely hopeful. Total destruction is what we witnessed total devastation is what was felt. At 12 years of age, I had never before in my life felt so hopeless, and as a result, extremely sad. Little did I know then the valuable lesson the experience was going to teach me. You see, there is a thing, a law about falling down. When you hit the ground and you're still alive, you realize you hadn't died. There's only one thing to be done and that is to get back up. We had lost everything. 97% of the structures on the island was totally decimated. The electrical power grid was wiped clean from the surface of the earth, along with any vegetation that resembled a plant or a tree. I remember thinking, this is what the end of the world must look like. However, what I really was looking at was a new beginning. Unfortunately, it would take me two years to come full circle to that realization. Myself, like many others I knew, fell into a depressive state of mind. My family and I had to temporarily relocate to my birth island of Curaçao, a different country, a different language. And now, ten of us living in my grandmother's tiny home, happy to be with family we wouldn't otherwise see, but clueless to what the future was going to bring. I remember vividly smiling about and, you know, but crying on the inside because I just didn't see how my dad was going to begin to rebuild all by himself. Thinking back on it now, it was a very difficult experience. An experience that blossomed eventually into opportunity that we had only dreamed of. But before we can see that good day, we had to endure the sad days. If you remember anything this life, my grandmother told me, she said, remember that everything worth having comes with sacrifice. In order to appreciate the good things in life, we must comprehend and understand as intricately as possible the bad things. Like every other emotion, sadness is a temporary event if you choose for it to be so. Like fearing something all your life, you can dwell on sadness for an eternity. I've mentioned it before, but the truth always comes full circle. See, there is death in life, and life in death. One cannot exist without the other. To remain fixed on one or the other is to rob your existence of the true experience of life. This is why we must part ways with being sad. The sooner one can overcome sadness, the more productive they become with their lives. However, it is critical that you master controlling your emotions so that they don't take away your most precious commodity, that which is time. Fear and anger loves to work with sadness. Self-pity typically the result of these emotional responses if left to ponder. This is where giving up is not an option. It is not an option because it is one aspect of your life that you have total control of. Cry if you must, 
Scream if you must. Punch your back until your knuckles bleed if you must. Do everything you have to do to get over your sorrow. And then you get up. You stand up. You jump up if you have to and begin working on letting it go. As long as there's a pulse, there's always opportunity. After the hurricane, we were suddenly thrusted into prehistoric existence. You know, martial law was initiated. Food, water, and shelter were cause for concern and oftentimes fought for. Within 10 days, we were able to get off the island. And after almost a year of staying with my grandmother, we were able to return home. Everything and everyone was in rebuilding mode. Myself and my brothers and sister missed 10 months of school. I had to make it up. It was all hard to do. But like I mentioned before, by year two, I began to realize the glory in all that had transpired. You see, one, myself and all my immediate family were alive. And two, we rebuilt our home and family business bigger and better than ever before. Life had progressed and actually gotten better. And as a result, sadness was replaced with joy and excitement. Hope was renewed and so was my faith in God. With that said, family and friends, I've come to understand the necessity of sorrow and its motivating feeling of hopelessness. A feeling that literally makes you want to run from it. It is there I realize the freeing power of letting go. Since then, I've never grown attached to material things like that anymore. I, I know now that this is to extend all things physical, including our flesh our bodies, it is all and will always be temporary. Accept this fact and you will have the fortitude needed to overcome any sorrow. I'll leave you with the words of Norman Cousins, a famous American journalist and author in the early 20th century. And he said, death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside of us while we live. Stay tuned for my next episode, The Emotion of Joy. Until then, as always, may you have a meaningful and purposeful week. God bless.